This is another video in the New York State Regents Physics course. The topic, topic 11, is waves. And this section, 11.14, covers standing waves. The first thing we need to understand, in order to understand a standing wave, what it is, how it's created, is we need to understand the difference between how, how, how does the reflection of a pulse or a wave off a loose end differ from the reflection off a fixed end. All right, so let's take a look at that. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a pole. All right, this is a pole. I assume the pole is buried into the ground with concrete so that the pole isn't going to fall down. All right, we take a piece of string. All right, here's a piece of string, and we attach it loosely to the pole. We make a loop, all right, we make a loop, and the loop goes around the pole. So the string can go up and down sliding along the pole. All right, it's not tied tight. The string can move. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of string, and I'm going to flick it to generate a pulse. Right, just a single pulse. Here's a single pulse. Right, you know that a wave would be made up of many, many repetitive pulses. This is a single pulse. The pulse is traveling in this direction. The velocity of the pulse is to the right. Now what happens when the end is loose, right, when the end is loose, is that the pulse will reflect and it will come back in the opposite direction all right, so now the pulse is traveling this way, and it will also be on the top. In other words, the pulse traveling, the initial pulse is on top. The, the final pulse, or the pulse after the reflection, is also on top. And I can't spell the word pulse. <laughs> All right, so that's what happens when a pulse is reflected off a loose end. Now, if you take the same pulse and reflect it off a fixed end. All right, I take the same pole, and I take the string, and I tie the string tightly, so it cannot move. All right, this end is fixed. All right, now, if I take the same pulse and flick it, all right, and have it travel in that direction to the right, what happens is when it reflects off the fixed end, Right, off this pole, off the boundary, it's not just going to go back in the opposite direction. The pulse is going to be inverted. The word is inverted, and inverted would mean upside down. The pulse is going to return to me. All right, I flicked it from here. Flick. <laughs> it went that way, and it came back to me in the opposite direction and also inverted or upside down. All right, so again, this, is, this explanation was what happens to a pulse when it reflects when the end is loose as opposed to when the end is fixed. All right, in the case of a loose end, it comes back in the opposite direction but stays on the same side in which I flicked it. I flicked it on the top. When it was loose, it came back on the top. If it hits a fixed end, it reflects but it comes back inverted. If I sent it on the top, it would come back on the bottom. If I sent it initially on the bottom, it would come back on the top. Inverted, upside down, compared to my initial pulse. And you can, um, you can consider this um, an amplitude. All right, so this is a, you can consider this, this is a positive amplitude, right, plus A, and this would, of course, be a negative amplitude. So what exactly is a standing wave? Well, uh, we'll start with a fairly lengthy definition, and then I'll show you uh, as we move along how very simple this definition actually is. A standing wave is a pattern that is created when two waves, now they would have to be the same type of wave, light waves, sound waves, etc. When two waves traveling in opposite directions through the same medium with the same frequency and amplitude interfere with each other and that causes them to produce what we call nodes and anti-nodes. Now I just want to mention here that if you've got the same type of wave right, traveling in the same medium right, with the same frequency 
all right? Uh, if they're traveling in the same medium, the speed of the waves, the speeds of the waves are going to be the same. Therefore, if they have the same frequencies, the wavelengths will also be the same. Okay, we know that. That's a given. All right, so again, what are the criteria that you need to produce a standing wave? You've got to have two waves. They've got to be traveling in opposite directions through the same medium. They have to have the same frequency and amplitude. And when they then interfere with each other, they produce what we call nodes and anti-nodes. Okay, I'm out of the way here so you can copy this definition. Here's that same definition in bullet form. The criteria required to produce a standing wave. Two waves of the same type, that would be light, sound, etc. They have to be traveling in opposite directions. They have to be in the same medium. That means that they're going to have the same speed. They have to have the same frequency, which if they're traveling at the same speed, requires that they also have the same wavelength. Same frequency and amplitude. When they interfere with each other under these conditions, they will produce nodes and anti-nodes. All right, so how do you create a standing wave? What I have down here is a very, very badly drawn guitar. Now, this guitar, poor thing, is only going to have one string. All right, so I'm going to start the string all right over here, all right, and run the string down the length of the guitar. Now, a guitar string is fixed at both ends. It's attached here to the body of the guitar and it's attached here at the top of the guitar's neck. Now there are also these little pins so that you can tighten the string. Right? When you tighten the string the pitch goes up, it gets higher. When you loosen the string the pitch goes down, it gets lower within a certain, certain parameters. So now you now have a string that is fixed at both ends. All right, so when you have a, a string that is fixed at both ends, all right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that string up to here, all right? When you have a string that is fixed at both ends, if you pluck that string, that string will vibrate, right, at its natural frequency. All right, let's, let's send, let's send the, the pulse down this way. All right, we'll send the wave for the string down this way, all right, and find one of the natural frequencies of this string. Now, you remember from earlier in this video that when the pulse hits here, it's going to invert and come back in the opposite direction. So the pulse comes back this way, all right, and because it's confined between these two points, between the two endpoints here, it must establish a specific, well, a, a certain range of specific frequencies and wavelengths. All right, you can see that the wavelength here, all right, one wavelength starts here, all right, a crest and a trough. All right, this, re this represents one wavelength from here, all right, to there. One crest, one complete crest, one complete trough, that would be one wavelength. So you've got actually one, two wavelengths, all right, on this fixed string, this, this string that's fixed at both ends. All right, now, the spots where the string does not vibrate, it does not vibrate here, it does not vibrate here, nor does it vibrate here, or here, or here. All right, these points on a standing wave are called nodes. These are called nodes. All right, these are points of maximum, or I should say complete, destructive interference. Complete destructive interference. These points on the two waves are 180 degrees out of phase, which completely annihilates the amplitude. So that the amplitude at the nodes, right, the amplitude at the nodes 
is zero. All right, I'll say zero meters or zero centimeters. All right, now I'm going to get rid of the guitar. We don't need the guitar. We'll go back into the musical instruments in a few minutes. All right, now, the points of maximum displacement, all right, so this would be, this would be zero displacement. We'll call the amplitude of zero, we'll also call that zero displacement vertically. All right. Now, these points here, all right, here, 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 and here, all right, you can count the four on top or you can count the four at the bottom. Don't count them twice. There's four. Those points are called anti-nodes. Anti-nodes. All right, these are points of constructive interference. interference. All right, the uh, angle between them you could say is zero degrees or 360 degrees. Uh, that would be one wavelength apart. All right, and the amplitude would be maximum. The amplitude is maximum. All right, the amplitude being from here up to there. Amplitude. You've got positive amplitude up here all right, and you've got negative amplitude down there. All right, so again, when you're counting the nodes and the anti-nodes, right, nodes here, you've got one, two, three, four, five. All right, anti-nodes, you've got one, two, three, four, or you could count one, two, three, four. Don't count eight. Uh, you only count them once because at any instant in time, it's either here or here not in both places at the same time. And that also explains why this crest here, right, is not canceling this trough here, because they're not uh, happening at the same time. One happens first, and then the other happens some brief amount of time later. All right, so in this diagram, you've got, you've got five nodes, and you've got four anti-nodes. And you, you can also take note that there are always, there's always one more node than there are anti-nodes. Five nodes, four anti-nodes. There's always one more node than there are anti-nodes. All right, that would be a good thing to write down as a rule. All right. There's always one more node than there are anti-nodes. And again, this is for a standing wave that is fixed at both ends. All right, what I'd like to do now, just very, very briefly, this could be a whole video by itself, the the, the physics of standing waves for the different types of musical instruments. But very, very briefly, I'd like to go over three categories of musical instruments. There are other categories. We could go into all the percussion instruments, which I'm not going to do here today. All right, um, there are, uh, I've got three categories of, of musical instruments here, and we're going to look at how the standing waves inside of those three instruments are different from each other. So first you have instruments which rely on a standing wave that is fixed at both ends. In other words, all of the stringed instruments. All right, now all of the stringed instruments would have all right, a, a node at the, at the end where it's fixed and a node at the other end where it's fixed. So I could draw a standing wave for this string like this. All right, there's my solid, there's my dotted. You can make them both solid, it really doesn't matter. All right, and, and there's another node in the middle there. I'm drawing the nodes as, as circles, all right, as black circles. Now. Stringed instruments would include the guitar, right, the bass guitar, um, the harp, the piano. Why is the piano here? Um, would you be surprised to learn that pianos have strings inside of them? A piano is really just a harp that's laying down on its side inside of a beautiful wooden case. All right, the violin, um, all of the stringed members of the um, orchestra, the violin, the viola, the cello, the bass fiddle, the, the, big, the big bass, the sitar, 
um, of an incredible instrument from India. Um, uh, the sitar, uh, you, you need to go, if you're interested in guitars at all or stringed instruments, you need to go on YouTube. You need to listen to somebody play the sitar who's really good, um, find somebody who's really good, and then um, you need to look up how the strings on a sitar are not all the same. They, they play in actually different ways. Very complex instrument, very interesting, very beautiful. Definitely look up the sitar if you have a time. Um, okay, now... Um, instruments that are fixed at one end, fixed or closed. Examples would be uh, all of the woodwinds, the single reed instruments, the double reed instruments. Single reed would be clarinet, saxophone, um, tenor saxophone, baritone saxophone, all of those. The oboe, the, the, uh, the large double reed uh, instrument, the, um, the bassoon. All right. All of your brass instruments fall into the category of fixed at one end or closed at one end. The trumpet, the trombone, the French horn, the tuba, right, they all fit into that category. Now, the reason that the, the clarinet and the trumpet both fall into this category is at the mouthpiece end, the person puts their mouth, all right, around the end of the instrument completely, um, which effectively blocks that end, uh, forming their embouchure, the way their mouth fits over the um, end of the mouthpiece is called the embouchure, all right, and that effectively closes that end. So you've got a node at the end there where it's closed, and then at the end that's open, the bell of the instrument, all right, the end of the uh, clarinet, the oboe, the, the trumpet, uh, you've got an anti-node. You see how it's top to bottom here? That's an anti-node. So I can draw one, two, three nodes, and there, there just has to be an anti-node at the bell end. All right, so that's different from the instruments that are fixed at both ends. All right, now, how is the flute different from the clarinet and the trumpet. The flute is an instrument that is open at both ends. It's not closed or fixed at either end. All right, so the flute and the piccolo, all right, now this end is actually closed here on the instrument. The instrument is a tube, just like the, the clarinet and the tuba and the trumpet are just uh, tubes. The clarinet is a straight tube. The trumpet is kind of twisted around a whole bunch of times, but basically it's a big tube, all right? The flute is also a tube that is closed at this end, but the mouthpiece of the flute has such a large hole that the physics is different. Uh, this is considered to be an open end, so the standing wave inside of a flute would have an anti-node, see how they're far apart? Would have an anti-node at the mouthpiece. Here's a node, here's a node, and at the opposite end of the flute, which is open, uh, you also have an anti-node. All right, so um, just really, really quickly, um, three categories of instruments that use different types of standing waves to produce the frequencies. All right, now we're going to start calculating the wavelengths, all right, which you could use to calculate frequencies. I'm not going to calculate frequencies actually in this video. I'm just going to calculate wavelengths. Um, but how the different types of standing waves produce the different frequencies, the different pitches of notes in the different types of instruments in different ways. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is make a chart of the possible wavelengths for standing waves that are created on a fixed string. Uh, I'm sorry, a string fixed at both ends. The first column is going to be the diagram where the uh, distance from one node to the last node would be 12 meters. Then we're going to have names for this uh, wavelength and frequency. Then we're going to have N, which is going to be the, the number of the harmonic or the number of half wavelengths. And I'll explain what all this means in just a moment. We're going to calculate the wavelength, right? And we're going to show the number of nodes and the number of anti-nodes. Now, what I'm going to do is erase all this, all right? Um, you guys have the worksheet, or I hope you printed out the worksheet, or you can copy this onto a piece of paper. Uh, in other words, copy this right here onto a piece of paper. All right, I'm going to get rid of it so that I have a lot more room for the chart. All right, here we go. Copy this down, okay? All right, as promised, I did remove the title of the chart and the headings for the chart, so we're going to have to keep in mind what it is that we're doing here. All right, the first uh, column here is going to be a diagram. All right, so let's start with the diagram. Now, remember, what we're really doing here is looking at the different frequencies that a specific guitar string at a specific tension, 
Because remember, you tighten or loosen guitar strings to, to tune the guitar. All right, so we're looking at the different frequencies that a specific guitar string is able to produce. All right, now, um, here are the two ends of the guitar. Now, this is going to be the biggest guitar in history because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this guitar string, all right, I'm going to make the length of the guitar string 12 meters. Okay, this is one big giant guitar, that's for sure. All right, so, so L is 12 meters. From here to here is 12 meters. And that will not change. That is a constant. This particular guitar string is 12 meters long. All right, a little crazy, but um, it makes the math much easier for the first time that we do a problem like this. All right, so from here to here is 12 meters. All right, now, um, the name for this, for this first frequency is going to be the fundamental frequency, also known as the first harmonic. So this column should say diagram, and this very next col column should say names at the top. Now, for the first harmonic, or the fundamental frequency, all right, we draw a node here, there's an anti-node, right, and there's the other node. The rest of the standing wave is down here. Okay, so this is what the fundamental frequency, or the first harmonic, looks like right, when, the, when the guitar string is vibrating up and down. This is what it's going to look like. Now, uh, the letter N can either represent the number of the harmonic or the number of half wavelengths. Right, the number of half wavelengths. Now, what you see here is one half of a wavelength. Right, because if we were going to draw the entire wavelength, and I'm going to copy this over here for just a minute. I'm going to get rid of this equation. We'll look at that in a minute. All right. If I were to copy this over here so I could show you what a whole wavelength would look like, this is half a wavelength. A whole wavelength would have to include this part, all right, which is not there. All right, so what you're looking at here in this diagram is one half of a wavelength. All right, here's half, all right, and then from here to here would be one whole wavelength. All right, so what you're looking at here is one half of a wavelength. All right, that's half a wavelength. All right, now, we want to calculate what would the wavelength be. Well, this is half a wavelength. You can just think to yourself, well, if half a wavelength is 12 meters, all right, L, the length from here to here is 12 meters, and that's only half of a wavelength, the whole wavelength would be, right, 24 meters. All right, so the wavelength, would be 24 meters. All right, so that next column is the actual wavelength. All right, now, how many nodes are there? One, two nodes. All right, there are two nodes. This next column is the number of nodes. How many anti-nodes are there? Well, there's the anti-node. There's one anti-node here, okay? And this just gets easier and easier. All right, so let's draw, let's draw the next the second harmonic. All right, I'm going to start it over here. All right, and put that over there. Okay, and here we go. All right, so now we'll go like this. We'll go like this. All right, that also fits with a node here and a node here. This is the next frequency that actually fits. All right, and then it goes back. Okay, now you see. Um, first of all, this one is called the second harmonic. All right, the name of this frequency is the second harmonic. Now, we're, I'm not actually going to calculate any of the frequencies. We're just going to calculate the wavelengths in this video. All right, in another video, we can calculate the frequencies. This is called the second harmonic, or it's called the first overtone. All right, but I like the name second harmonic because n equals 2. All right, and how many half wavelengths do you see? Well, there's a half here and another half, so that's two, two 
half wavelengths, or this is actually showing one whole wavelength. All right, just get rid of this, make a noise. All right, um, so n equals 1, n equals 2. All right, so now we're going to calculate the wavelength. Well, I mean, actually, here, um, you've got the wavelength starts here, one crest, one trough, that's one wavelength, and one wavelength is from here to here, 12 meters. All right, so the wavelength is 12 meters. All right, how many nodes? One, two, three nodes. All right, places that are on the equilibrium line, places where the amplitude is zero, places where the wave is not moving, all right, places of complete destructive interference, one, two, three nodes, all right, three nodes and two antinodes. One, two antinodes. All right, now, there is another way to calculate the wavelength besides just looking at it and saying, hey, I can figure out the wavelength. It's easy because she used the number 12. All right, um, the equation for the wavelength for n, all right, n is 1, n is 2, for this one, for this one, whatever n is, all right, the equation for the wavelength is wavelength n equals 2L over n. All right, so for the first one, all right, the wavelength was 2 times 12 meters because the length from here to here is 12 meters. That does not change for this problem. n is 1. All right, uh, there's no unit there, okay? So this is 2 times, this is 24 divided by 1. The wavelength is 24, all right? If you want to do the next one, all right? This one here, what would the wavelength be? How many meters? All right, it's 2 times 12 divided by n equals 2. All right, so basically the 2s cancel, and the answer is that the wavelength of this wave is 12 meters. Notice this wave is this, this wavelength is this long. The wavelength is 24 meters. This wavelength is, is half as much. Right? This wavelength is from here to here, 12 meters. Okay, now let's do the next one. Right? Now we're gonna we're gonna remember this equation because I'm gonna erase this equation. So we're gonna remember or, or write it down. All right? The wavelength equals 2L divided by n. Alright? So here we go. Alright, we've got we've got our we've got our node. And our second node, the distance from here to here, is 12 meters. All right, I'm going to make one, two, three. Okay, it fits perfectly. That's the whole point here. It has to fit perfectly. You have to have a node here and a node there. As long as you have a node here and a node there and it's even, symmetrical in between, you got yourself a correct answer here. So this is another possible standing wave. Now, since they all have different wavelengths, they're all different frequencies. All right, now, the wavelength is getting shorter, so the frequency here is higher than the frequency there. So, I mean, you could say that this note is ooh, and this note is ooh, and this note is ooh. Right? The frequency or the pitch is getting higher and higher all right, as you change the wavelengths. All right? um, and those frequencies were not perfectly done, so don't, don't hold me to it. All right, here we go. Um, this is the third harmonic, also known as the second overtone. Okay, um, you've got n equals 3. You have three half wavelengths. All right, so that means from here to here, is one and a half, 1.5 wavelengths. That's how many wavelengths there are from here to here. Uh, let me show you, all right? So if you start here, a crest and a trough, go to there, that's one wavelength plus another half of a wavelength. All right, so this from here to here is one and a half wavelengths. But what is the wavelength in meters? How, what's the distance from here to here? All right, the distance of one wavelength. Again, one wavelength is a crest and a trough. So right to there, from there to there, how far is that? Well, you say to me, look, lady, all right, if this is 12, 
and each of these is 4, right? 4, 8, 12. So the wavelength is 8 meters. All right, but what if, what if you have a more difficult number? What if, you, what if somebody doesn't pick the number 12, which is, has a lot, of, um, a lot of factors, so it's easy, all right? Um, then you would have to use the equation, all right? The equation being the wavelength of, for n is 2 times L divided by n. All right, so for this one here, again, L, the length, all right, is 12 meters, okay? So 2 times 12 meters divided by n, n is 3. This is the third harmonic, all right? And the third harmonic, while you're at it, has three antinodes, all right? One, two, three antinodes, okay? So 3, n is 3. 2 times 12 is 24 divided by 3 is 8 meters. So the wavelength of this wave is 8 meters. And while we're at it, all right, let me get rid of this. And while we're at it, this wave has, this wave has how many nodes? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes. And how many antinodes? 1, 2, 3 antinodes. This wave has four nodes and three antinodes. Okay, again, there's always one more node than there are antinodes. Okay, now we could we could do one more. If I erase if I erase all of this, we we could do one more. We could have ourselves a little party here. All right, so I'm going to erase this, and we're going to do one more. All right, here we go. And we just have to remember what all the columns stand for. I hope you have that written down someplace, but here we go. Okay, so um, the diagram, all right, from here to here is 12 meters. That does not change. All right, now we want to do one, two, like that, okay? Then we go backwards, it reflects back and inverts because it hit a fixed end, all right? When the wave gets to a fixed end, it inverts instead of being on the bottom, now it's on the top, and it goes backwards. So we have just created another standing wave. The name of this one is the fourth harmonic or the third overtone. The fourth harmonic or the third overtone. All right, um, what would N be? Well, you can count the number of um, blobs here. All right, one, two, three, four. All right, N equals four. That's the fourth harmonic, or you could say there are four antinodes, or you could say there are four half wavelengths. This is a half wavelength, it's just a crest. This is a half wavelength, it's just a trough here. All right, I'm going to I'm going to look at the the solid line. Just a crest, that's a half. Just a trough, that's a half. Another crest is another half and another trough. So there are four halves. There are four half wavelengths in this diagram. So from here to here, that's two wavelengths. Let's see how that's two wavelengths. All right? You've got from here to here, crest and a trough is one wavelength. Crest and a trough, two wavelengths. One wavelength, two wavelengths. So from here to here is two wavelengths. All right, now, what is the wavelength? The number of meters for one wavelength. Well, if this whole thing is 12, how much is one wavelength? Obviously, it's going to be six meters. All right, the wavelength is going to be six meters. But if it was a difficult number... I picked 12 because it's a great number. It's got lots of factors, all right? It, it divides by other numbers very easily, all right? Um, but if, if, this was, if, I, if this number here was like 34.8, you know, um, well, you would just be half, but you, you see what I'm saying. I mean, we can pick a number for L that's not quite so easy as 12, in which case you would use this equation. The wavelength is going to be 2L divided by N. All right, so let's figure out the wavelength. Now, we already know it's going to be 6 meters. If we don't get 6 meters, we made a mistake, all right? So 12 meters is L, all right? And N for this diagram 
is 4. All right? So 2 times 12 is 24 divided by 4 is 6 meters. So the wavelength is 6 meters. And there are how many nodes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes. All right? 5 nodes. And how many anti-nodes? I'll count them on the bottom this time. It doesn't matter. One, two, three, four anti-nodes. Five nodes and four anti-nodes. All right. So um, uh, this discussion has been about standing waves. All right. Um, uh, how do we create them? What are the characteristics of a standing wave? What has to be true to get a standing wave? How do standing waves apply to musical instruments? All right, and how do you do some of the calculations for standing waves? Now, the only thing we calculated here pretty much was the wavelength. All right, um, you could also go on to calculate um, the frequencies if you had a little bit more information and the speeds of the waves. But once you get this down, then that other stuff is, is not terribly difficult.